for the introduction. My talk is about analysis of unstable analyte in PKBE studies submitted in ANDS. This presentation reflects my personal view and should not be construed to represent FDA's views or policies. The learning objectives of my talk are to explain regulatory requirements for stability and to identify and resolve stability issues. The measured analyte concentration should reflect the true systemic analyte concentration. If the analyte is unstable, then the applicant does not take precautions to stabilize the analyte. The measured concentration may lead to overestimate or underestimate of the analyte concentration in study samples. Therefore, during method development, the applicant should determine the chemical stability of the analyte in a given matrix. If the analyte is unstable, the applicant should take precautions to stabilize the analyte. During method validation, stability evaluation should cover the expected sample conditions from sampling collection to the last sample analysis. Stability tests include benchtop stability, autosampler stability, extraction stability, resource stability, long-term stability, stock solution stability. Sufficient attention should be paid to the stability of the analyte in whole blood directly after collection from subjects and prior to preparation for storage. Depending on the analyte, as well as the sample collection and assay conditions, whole blood stability can be very useful. For example, a drug can be unstable in whole blood or absorb two cellular components during collection, but uh, the drug can still be stable in plasma or serum. Whole blood stability is to ensure that the concentrations obtained by the analytical method reflect the concentrations of the analyte in the subject's blood at the time of sample collection, especially when the matrix is plasma or serum in the bioanalysis. If a stabilizer or enzyme inhibitor is used during the sample collection, the applicant should evaluate, should evaluate the interference of the stabilizer or enzyme inhibitor on the quantitation of the analyte. This slide shows some examples of analytes with stability issues submitted in ANDAs. The stability issues can be caused by many different mechanisms. For example, if the parent's analyte is metabolized by acylglucuronide conjugation, the acylglucuronide conjugated metabolites may be hydro hydrolyzed back to the parent analyte if no precaution is taken to stabilize acylglucuronide conjugated metabolite. This bad conversion may lead to overestimate of the parent analyte concentration in study samples. We did a survey on ANDAs submitted between 2007 and 2016 with potential analyte stability issues. The survey drug products are in oral dosage forms and their analyte stability directly affects the measurement of analyte concentration for the BE determination. The leading cause is the bad conversion of unstable metabolites to its parent analyte, such as acylglucuronide conjugated metabolite or lacto-conjugated metabolite to, it, to their corresponding parent analyte. Most commonly used precautions include low temperature for sample processing, control of sample pH, addition of enzyme inhibitor, light protection, change of extraction solvent, or the combination of the above method. 26% ANDS did not take precautions to stabilize the analyte in 183 surveyed ANDS with potential <coughs> analyte stability issues which increases review cycles and slow down the approval process. 
Now the question is how to evaluate analyte stability. The first question to ask is whether the analyte st uh, is stable or not. You can get this information from various resources, such as chemical structure of the analyte, reference listed drug label, literature, inker sample reanalysis. If the analyte is stable, you can use routine stability test without taking extra steps to stabilize the analyte or its metabolite. However, if the analyte is not stable, there are three questions to ask. Is a, uh, is a precaution taken to stabilize the analyte or its metabolite? Is a precaution sufficient to stabilize the, the analyte or its metabolite? Is a stabilizer added to quality controls and calibration standards? If the answer is no to any of these three questions, additional studies are needed to evaluate the analyte stability under study conditions. For stability issues caused by bank conversion, the most common supporting, supporting data are stability studies on the mixture of the analyte and its metabolite at different concentrations and study conditions. Next, I will use three case studies to explain how to identify and resolve stability issues. Case study number one, analyte is stable without precaution. The B determination for this drug product is based on the measured parent analyte concentration. It was reported that there is potential bank conversion from acyl glucuronide conjugated metabolite to parent analyte. This bank conversion may lead to overestimate of the parent analyte concentration in study samples. In the original AND submission, the applicant did not take precaution to prevent bank conversion. The applicant only included the parent analyte in the method validation. After the original BE assessment, the applicant was asked to evaluate the impact of potential back conversion on the BE determination. After two rounds of BE amendments, the applicant conducted the method validation on samples containing both parent analyte and acyl glucuronide conjugated metabolite. The applicant provided a, couple, a complete set of stability data without precautions, which cover the study conditions from blood sample collection, sample storage, to sample assay. In the final BE assessment, it was determined that there is no significant stability issue without precautions in the bioanalysis process for this drug product. The, the study was deemed adequate. Case study number two, analyte is unstable without precaution. The B determination for this drug product is based on the measured parent analyte concentration. It was reported that there is a potential bank conversion from lacto-conjugated metabolite to parent analyte. This back conversion may lead to overestimate of the parent analyte concentration in study samples. In the original AND submission, the applicant did not take precaution to prevent back conversion from lacto-conjugated metabolite to its parent analyte. The applicant only included the parent analyte in the method validation. After the original BE assessment, the applicant was asked to evaluate the impact of potential back conversion on the BE determination. After three rounds of BE amendments and one post-CR meeting, the applicant conducted method validation on samples containing both parent analyte and lacto-conjugated metabolite. The applicant provided a complete set of stability data without precautions, 
which covers the study conditions from blood sample collection, sample pro, uh, storage, to sample assay. But benchtop stability and long-term stability failed to meet the meet to acceptance criteria. So the measured parent analyte concentration did not reliably reflect the true systemic parent analyte concentrations at the time of the sample collection. The applicant repeated its in vivo BE studies by adding stabilizer to prevent back conversion. The new in vivo BE study was deemed adequate. Case study number three. Analyte is unstable in the extraction process. The BE determination for this drug product is based on the measured parent analyte concentration. It was reported that there is potential bank conversion from carboxylic acid metabolite to parent drug by reaction with methanol in the extraction process. This bank conversion may lead to overestimate of the parent analyte concentration in study samples. In the original NDA summation, the applicant used methanol to extract the analyte. The Inker sample reanalysis failed to meet acceptance criteria. It was also observed that this ANDA has higher sample concentrations than other in-house ANDAs for the same drug product. Because the stability issue comes from the extraction process only, two options were communicated to the applicant. Reassay samples for parent drug or repeat in vivo BE studies and analyze samples with a method without back conversion issues. The applicant chose the second option and repeated in vivo BE studies. In the bioanalysis, the applicant changed the methanol to acetyl nitrile in the extraction process. The applicant analyzed study samples using validated new analytical method. In the final BE assessment, it was determined the new in vivo BE studies were adequate. Summary. Appropriate precautions should be exercised during the bioanalysis of unstable analyte. Lack of precautions for unstable analytes in the bioanalysis process is a common issue in ANDABE studies and increases the number of assessment cycles if the, if the analyte is unstable, the applicant should conduct a thorough method validation in the presence of a precaution, covering the study conditions from blood sample collection, sample storage, to sample assay. The applicant also needs to provide adequate justification if a precaution is not used. Now it's challenge question time. Challenge question number one. When a parent's drug is measured, which of the following analytes spiked in the medium can be used to demonstrate that, one, there's no significant bank conversion from metabolite A to parent drug, and two, parent drug is stable. A, HQC, MQC, LQC of parent drug. B, HQC, MQC, LQC of metabolite A. C, HQC, MQC, LQC, and blank of parent drug, and HQC of metabolite A, D, HQC of parent drug, and HQC, MQC, LQC of metabolite A. You have 10 seconds to answer the question. The correct answer is C. HQC, MQC, LQC, and blank of parent drug, and HQC of metabolite A. The answer A cannot be used to demonstrate that there is no significant bank conversion from metabolite A to parent drug because the, me uh, the medium does not have metabolite A. Answer B cannot be used to demonstrate that parent drug is stable 
because the medium does not have parent drug. Answer D cannot be used to demonstrate that the parent drug is stable at a lower and medium concentrations. Challenge question number two. Which one of the following stability tests is needed to cover the analyte stability right after sample collection from subjects and prior to preparation for storage if the matrix used is plasma in the bioanalysis? A. Benchtop stability. B. Auto sampler stability. C. Extraction stability. D. Whole blood stability. You have 10 seconds to answer the question. The correct answer is D, whole blood stability. Last but not least, I would like to thank my colleagues, Ron, Utpo, Nilofer, Ethan, Bing, Tian, and Ki, for their help on the preparation of this talk. That concludes my presentation. I will respond to submitted questions in the Q Q A sessions later. Thank you.